from 6pm today, all of Greater Sydney, the Blue Mountains, the Central Coast and Wollongong will go into a lockdown with stay-at-home orders in place until midnight Friday the 9th of July. In relation to the suburbs of concern, obviously in Greater Sydney, South Western and Western Sydney remain uh, the generators of most of the cases. 550 cases in within those areas of Western and South Western Sydney that, are, uh, that continue to be a challenge. I talk to the nurse, please kill me. Please, I can't afford. On this occasion, I believe the Western suburbs overall have been discriminated against. Being stuck in lockdown in the suburb of Guildford and being the only daughter with five brothers has been no easy task, but it has definitely been entertaining. <laughs> Why? <laughs> The areas of concern uh, remain the same. The vast majority of our cases, an overwhelming number of them in New South Wales, are in South West and Western Sydney. And in particular, we call out again, Marylands, Greenacre, Guildford and Guildford. 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 With Guildford. Now, in terms of the local government areas of concern, I can't stress enough uh, that we fear for you. We've imposed a lot of restrictions on you already. Okay. Uh, that we will be implementing curfews in those local government areas of concern from Monday from 9pm to 5am. You cannot leave your home. Two months of lockdown and the LGAs are doing it tough. Infection rates are climbing, death rates are increasing and the focus continues to be on the LGAs of concern. Living in Guildford means we are the hottest of our hotspots and all we can do is stay home and catch up with family through FaceTime. There looks to be no end in sight. Today is day 61 of lockdown. New South Wales recorded a record high of 919 cases. Um, just quickly went to get our essentials and panic buying is back again. I think it's because this video is so clear on Facebook that um, truck drivers are going on strike. And people are scared that there's not going to be a restock of certain items. This lockdown has been really hard on all of us. Just two weeks ago, Lifeline recorded its highest number of calls in the organization's history. Lockdown has been especially hard for my father because he is such an outdoors person. He resorted to his gardening as a survival strategy.
lockdown is uh, is uh, boring and miserable. There is not much to do. I had to find myself. I had to find something to do. So, unfortunately, a lot of friends of my age are being sick or separated. We can't see each other, so I had to find something to do. I grow up uh, parsley, coriander, uh, green bean, radish, onion over there. So it, it give me give me give me a pleasure to 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 do something, you know. Absolutely. A simple trip as a family to the park to play basketball was key to staying fit both mentally and physically while also giving us a sense of escape from home. Because we are all one family, we are allowed to go out together. Today that is me and five of my brothers. The daily press conferences have been an essential viewing for my family. But when Minister for Health Brad Hazard took the microphone today, we were disappointed that despite us doing the right thing day after day, he was pointing the finger at us. But there are other communities, other people from other backgrounds who don't seem to think that it's necessary to comply with the law and who don't really give great consideration to what they do in terms of its impact on the rest of the community. Uh, I saw Minister Hazard's comments over the weekend. I just shook my head in disbelief and quite frankly, to be nice, uh, there's an old saying that uh, goes, some things are better left unsaid. And when it comes to Minister Hazard's comments, uh, this applies uh, directly to it because... This is my brother Basha, a practicing solicitor. He is an authorised worker and has been able to work uninterrupted. And as a lawyer, he is concerned with the tale of two Sydney's narrative emerging. Look, I, I think that was a... Uh, poorly, ta poorly worded comment, bad taste, out of touch is the phrase that I would use. Uh, it reminds me of Joe Hockey when he uh, said um, while he was treasurer under Tony Abbott that um, people in Western Sydney don't drive to work. I mean, he couldn't be further out of touch, um, you know, to, to assume and, uh, and use a paintbrush approach that people in Western Sydney don't comply with the laws. It's just completely, complete nonsense. I mean... <laughs> So today is day 68 of lockdown. It also happens to be the first day of spring. Beautiful, beautiful weather, as you can see. Nice, beautiful sun. Too bad we can't go anywhere. At this point in time, um, I know more people who have COVID than people who don't, which is pretty upsetting. Um, most of my neighbors have COVID. Most of my cousins have, neighbor, uh, have COVID. Um, I've seen a handful of my neighbours being taken to hospital because of COVID. So I guess it's been just like a mental game at this point in time. And I'm just trying to make the most out of a bad situation. Take care of yourselves. It's not something, it's not a game. It's for, it's for real. The government's messaging is really serious and is reflecting what is happening in our communities. As COVID continued to surge in the Cumberland LGA, so too did COVID-related deaths. And the grief has entered our home and my father is inconsolable. So one of my best friends and neighbour as well, I, we know each other 30 years ago. He wasn't vaccinated, he got the COVID and he, he passed away. The, the, the hardest part about uh, his death uh, is that I knew he, he was sick and I couldn't visit him. His situation, he was suffering a lot and then I still couldn't visit him. And at the end of the day, he died. He passed away and I couldn't uh, attend his fu funeral. Later, 
Footage of the funeral appeared on social media, showing more police present than mourners. Who it is? Who it is? They're arresting the boys for visiting their loved ones. Who it is? He's been fed income, he's locking him up for visiting the loved one. We are currently at Hajj Amr, it's not Hajj Amr the boys' funeral, and the police have arrived. Now, as you can see, everyone is in their cars. Nobody's out except for the 10 people on the list. And the police are refusing to let us bury our beloved uncle. What's this world gone to? Neighbor, this, uh, his family was holding um, a Zoom meeting for uh, all friends to pay condolence. But unfortunately, there was only limited number can join the, the meeting. So it was failure for me to do it. It's the hardest part to bear it. It's something that you can handle sometimes. Yeah. Unfortunately, we suffered many unnecessary deaths. And every death is a tragedy. The reasons why they were very hesitant about the vaccine and they underestimated the velocity and the transmissibility of the Delta variant. They were not prepared for it. And our information uh, campaign was lagging behind. Saeed Khayal, a 72-year-old COVID survivor, is lucky to be alive. Stay in ICU around 16 days. So many times in the hospital, stop breathing and everyone running to me and he helped me and, and uh, I talked to the nurse please kill me please I can't afford though the government began pointing the fingers at the LGAs they failed in creating a vaccination program targeted at culturally linguistic and diverse backgrounds to convince people of the safety of the vaccine Community leaders like Dr. Jamal Rifi took initiative and organised vaccine programs himself in southwestern Sydney. People were more afraid of the vaccine rather than being afraid of the virus itself, and that's where the problem stemmed. Vaccine hesitancy was everywhere in New South Wales, but mainly in our local area because of the cultural, linguistic, and racial background. People were much more influenced by events and news coming from overseas. So I approached the Bulldogs and now we, are operate, we operated the first drive through in New South Wales and we wanted to eliminate that fear in some of segment of the community so we needed to give them an avenue for them to get vaccinated and we vaccinate 400 to 420 every day. And that's why in local area where we have people speak probably 60 or 70 different languages, now our rates of vaccination is much higher than the rest of New South Wales. So it is currently 1.11 a.m. and there is a helicopter just floating above our heads. So this is the flight path of the helicopter that's been floating above our heads for quite some time. And as you can see, it's been floating over Guildford, circling specifically around Guildford and Maryland, you know, just the Cumberland LGA for quite some time. And this has been a daily occurrence. It happens at least twice every day. And most of the times it happens at around 1 or 2 a.m. We've witnessed horseback mounted police, um, you know, Polair, the helicopter flying overhead over the weekends and into the night. 
Well, why? It's excessive. Uh, you know, we're, if we're all in this together, it hasn't felt that way. We've been treated like second class citizens. And it's not me saying that. That's the whole community saying this. Because, you know, whilst every weekend when the sun's out, we witness scenes like we did in Bondi last weekend, where thousands of people just flock to the beach, whether it be Bondi, Coogee or Manly, you know, laying around sunbathing, masterless, not appearing to be doing much, violating the uh, public health orders, but yet no visible police presence moving them on. Police might be there, but they're standing around. Yet in Western Sydney, it's a stark contrast where we have uh, ghost towns and streets that are basically empty, and maybe we'll, uh, the one person we see without a mask, you know, we're witness to video footage which shows them being thrown to the floor and being handcuffed. And if they're having a medical episode or apparent medical episode, uh, not having those handcuffs removed. Attack the handcuffs! Come on! The stark difference is the way in the way that the police responded to the health orders uh, across the division, divide of Sydney, um, really, I think, sowed the seeds for division. People in Western Sydney may have now, you know, lost faith in the way the police um, served them. For me, this lockdown meant this is the second semester of the last two years I've had to study from home. While it has been difficult for me, it has also been difficult for my two younger brothers who are both in high school. Zaid is nearing the end of year 11, which means he is about to start his HSC course from home. Well, I am concerned for this year because I have started year 12 topics as of now being in end of term 3. But I'm not as concerned now because it's still the beginning of year 12, but I just hope by the next year everything's resolved, everyone's vaccinated. Obviously, learning online it has its difficulties and it's harder to get close with the work you're doing and asking teachers questions and doing your tests. Half of them have been cancelled, so I'm not sure I have a deep understanding on the topics I'm doing. While the baby in the family, Anwar, has found online school difficult too, he is finding ways to make the most of it. Online learning is boring, but I love that I can do my work comfortably from home. My favourite part of online school is that as soon as I finish my work, I can come to the park. Day 81 of lockdown, and we've taken measures in our own hands. Thank you, Gladys. Still closed are hairdressers, shops, restaurants, and most importantly, barbers. I'd like to ask for a refund. What do you need to comb? What do you need to cut? Oh, your hair's not that long on the top. Oh, bro, it is. Trust me, when you actually hit it up. Listen, when you, you, with your right hand, with the scissors there, pull up, and then you catch it with your left. You switch to the it's lockdown proved to be our first for everything, even home haircuts, as the boys try to teach each other. So nervous. It's a good thing we are a close-knit family and that we enjoy time together. Meal times have always been special. Mum, what is that? I mum. Salad. Avocado. Avocado, put a cheese in it. Mum, can I have some? And of course, it is the perfect time to roast each other and have a laugh. You want that? situation worsened, physical activity became the only safe haven during lockdown. And checking into deserted parks was the new norm. 
All in the while, the eastern suburbs was swarming with beach parties. This is not Bondi right now. I think. <laughs> look at this. I think people forgot about everything that's happened around the world. That's so cool. Oh, the tale of two Sydney's was emerging as a story as a result of the double standard, and this has angered people in Sydney's west. With someone well and truly expressing their anger at the premier. Day 100 of lockdown is picnic time. After being in lockdown with five brothers for a hundred days, this is my time for some girl catch up with my cousins. Like, lean on one side. So, <laughs> it feels so good to finally be out of the house. <laughs> Hello, Hello. 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 As vaccine hesitancy diminished and vaccination rates soared, citizens of the 12 LGAs that faced the harshest lockdowns in New South Wales took advantage of the new freedoms to picnic. Finally, some good news. The 12 LGAs of concern lead the country's vaccination charge, allowing Australia to become one of the most vaccinated countries in the world. This means that Sydney siders are preparing for a lift of lockdown. Your Premier has been one of the many changes during lockdown. And this one says it is time to open up. Today, it was actually yesterday, uh, marked a great milestone uh, for our state uh, with our 70 per cent double dose vaccination rate. We've always said that vaccination is the key uh, to our freedom uh, and the sacrifices in the effort of people right across New South Wales have ensured uh, that we can open up as quickly and safely as possible. Uh, we know that this is not just a health crisis, it's an economic crisis too. Uh October the 11th, Freedom Day. After 106 days of lockdown in an LGA of concern, the blissful ocean breeze carried the last three months of pain and agony off my shoulders, mesmerizing my soul. A simple trip to the beach with friends to watch the sunrise has never been more appreciated. And of course, the first touch of ocean water was a cause for celebration. Not seeing my oldest brother and his young family for three months was tough. Although the kids might have forgotten us, it did not take long for the memory to be refreshed and enjoy the end of lockdown. Empty parks were now a thing of the past. Swings that once swayed with the wind are now reminding children of the joys of life. The best part of lockdown ending meant that I can finally go to my cousin's house. As vaccination rates continued to climb, life was slowly returning to normality. Birthday parties are no longer celebrated alone. And the kids are back at school. Today is the 25th of October. It's my first day back at school. I feel happy to be back at school. I can finally be with my friends and have face to face learning. Bye, Zay. But a COVID case at the school resulted in a staggered return of students back. This means that Anwar is still studying from home until November. As life is returning to a pre-COVID era, so too is traffic in Sydney's CBD. In July, in the beginning of August, when we hit the peak of the pandemic, I mean, we'd be lucky to see you know, a handful of individuals on the street. Uh, completely deserted, no traffic, no shops closed. Um, over the last couple of weeks, traffic has definitely picked up, you know, threefold, even fourfold. Uh, activity, foot traffic has increased, and um, this week, actually, I've seen a lot of people in the retail shops.
and life is finally back to normal.